Okay, well, that was weird. Back again. Uh, hello, universe. Today, we're going to be playing some more Shadow Dark. See if we can't get this party killed and all wrapped up. Um, I finally have had my uh, copy of the book delivered. I'm sure by now everyone's seen it. It's fine. Uh, only one ribbon. Kind of sucks. But hey, it's better than the uh, Wizard of the Coast books. And then, yeah, it's got nice big print that's easy for us to read. Um, nice pictures. I'm sure you've seen most of this before. Um, yeah, so it's all very nice. It's fine. We also got the, uh, the Solo Dark book. I think this is a bit flimsy. Um, broadly, it's just like a whole list of like... Um, where is it? Yeah, like other things that you can... You could get, right? Um, so... I have the Tomb of Adventure, of Adventure Design. See, as much as it's a good book, right? And it's got like loads of cool stuff in it and, and, and all the rest. Um, you can't really use it on the fly very well because it is so big. Um, I broadly much prefer the kind of solo oracle stuff to be easily, easily browsed and readable. Um, but yeah, not overly impressed with this. Really, I don't think it was worth the money. Um, but hey, we bought it anyway. And then there's the screen, and we'll use this as a background at some point for something. I don't think the screen is amazing, has amazing stuff, but, you know, it's fine. Um, mostly around, like, randomly generating NPCs, which is fine. Um, I'd prefer to have, you know, monster tables and all that kind of stuff back here it's like let's have a quick check i mean it does have this random this is useful this table here the middle box yeah all right, you can see it this one that's kind of good um the rest of it eh, whatever but it is pretty yeah it'll go it'll go well back there with like the mork the Mork Borg one. So if we look at the... Yeah, if we were to look at, say, the Mork, Mork Borg one. More difficult to read, maybe. But it feels like there's a lot more going on in here. Um, so, yeah. We're not using a side camera today anyway, so we don't need to worry about having that up. Um, but yeah, yeah, yep, 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 yep. That's fine. Anyway, let's get on with it. <clears throat> so we'd reached here and we just had a wee scrap. Well, not so much a scrap. We'd um, chased away the um, vampire spawn with our uh, uh, cleric or priest, as they're termed in this. Um, and... That, that's what happened, and that all went very well. Um, except that it scurried back to its master to tell it about there being these these adventurers in in the in the dungeon, um, and the, the, they have decided that, that what they're going to do is they're going to mislead the characters, so they're going to like uh, try and mess about with the characters wherever possible. So um, yeah, that's what's going to happen with that, uh, and. Uh, yeah, let's... I'm already in my pyjamas, you see. It's it's almost bedtime. We're just going to do a little, little... little bit of this. So, we're in here and we're going to go straight ahead. So, let's roll to find out... Um, what kind of misery is is awaiting us. Let's just get uh, the... Uh, <clears throat> let's get the old flex crawl in front of me. Uh... I still haven't resolved all the little issues I have with everything, but you know, such is life. So, main one. Oh, and we were on uh, one, t 
two, three, you know, down to like two on the torch. So eight. Eight is eight is a T junction. Right, like so. Now, roll for what happens in the corridor. 19. Uh, 19 on a hallway encounter. Um, combat encounter. I don't have my random table up. What? <clears throat> Here we go, roll a d12. What have we encountered? Seven. What's a seven? Giant rats. That sounds like something we could probably deal with. And um, if we just have a look, just have a look on this table. So, uh, what? Uh, what are the rats doing? Two d six. Other than making a mess of the table, seven. Building nesting. Okay, so building up a nest. Um, what's for rats reactions? Hostile. Okay. Um, so, and also, how many rats are there? I reckon. I mean, they're nesting, right? So probably like three d six is probably um, a good number. So that's thirteen giant rats. Oh boy. So they're all like nesting around this center area. They've got a wee nest here. Um, I suppose I need to get out the um, actual. As much as I, well, where is it? Giant rats. Giant rats. Giant G G G G G A B C D E F G. So G comes after E. Giant hill. Giant stone. Giant frost. These are not. These are not rats. Okay, clearly, are rats in the R section? I presume they must be, if they're not in the G section. R. R comes after P, does it? Yes, it does. Rats, giant. So, ugh, dire rat. So, rats. Twelve of them. No, 13 of them. So you got 13 giant rats. 13 giant rats. 13 of the little buggers, okay. <clears throat> so, what are we going to do? Well, I mean, and they're aggressive. So, is either side surprised? The rats are surprised. Players aren't surprised. Um, so we get to attack them for free for one round. So this is good. Um, it helps if we get this out. Um, as such, first round cast sleep. Right? That makes sense. Um, cast sleep. Then uh, melee from the two fighters, and then missile from the thief. I guess that uh, seems sensible to me. If we get these little fiery boys out, of course, the wizard. So they are—they are. I mean, we got hit points of five, so that sounds like a one-hit dice monster to me. Um, so they're under level two. So start off with the um, magic spell. We'll probably start off with a missile attack. So, hmm. Let's start off with a spell. See if a spell gets them first. So, spell casting. Spell casting. Where have you gone? Slums? No, slums don't cast spells. Well, I mean, they could. Using stats, shadow dark maps, 
NPCs, blah de blah de blah. Um, where is where is spell casting? Mm. Mm. Hit points, nonsense, noise, nonsense, nonsense. Not here it is. Okay, spell casting. Spell casting. Game Masters, Gameplay, Spells, Wizard Spells, Casting Spells, page 44. <laughs> casting Spells, okay, here we go. Um, spell Casting, when you cast a spell, you invite blah, 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 blah. Uh, to cast a spell, a Wizard Spell, um, you make a Spell Casting check by blowing 1d20 plus your intelligence. Um, so get higher than 10 plus for spell tier. We also have plus one to spell casting for for our thingy. So and we get plus three, so it's plus four. Target 11. Eight plus four, 12. That's higher than 11. Cast sleep. All the rats have gone to sleep. All right? Because <clears throat> sleep, 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 sleep. Sleep? Where does S come in the alphabet? I don't know. Instant near, uh, you weave a lulling spell that fills a near sized cube extending from you. Who knows what that means? Uh, you know, 10, 20 foot, 30 foot, close enough for it to get all of them by the looks of it. All creatures fall into a deep sleep. So, yeah, we kill them all. And we keep the spell. I have a feeling on some level that this spell system is a bit broken. Um, because, like, The spells are kind of almost as powerful as BX, but if you successfully cast the spell, right, you keep the spell. So, unless I'm misunderstanding something, right, let's just go back to 43 a second. 44. Mm. 44. Results. If you succeed, um... Spell casting, the spell takes effect. If you fail your spell casting, the spell does not take effect. You can't cast that spell again until you complete a rest. Right? If you roll a 20, your spell cast succeeds, and you may double one of the spell's numerical effects. Yeah, wild. Yeah, so you can just... If the spell was a wizard spell, you can't cast that spell again until you successfully complete a rest. So this is critical failure, right? You must also roll on a wizard mishap table. So that's for the cri critical failure. Penance. That's for critical cleric failures. Yeah, I mean... I'm pretty sure I read it right. So that's kind of... That's a thing. So, we killed... What was it? 13... 13 rat... Giant rats. Um, were they... Protecting any treasure? Uh, no. And it's an even roll, so we don't need to worry about the modifiers. Okay. Um, just a lot of dead rats. So, one to three, four to six. One to three. We're going to keep on going straight. We've decided we like it straight ahead, and uh, that's where we're going. Oh, fiddlesticks. Um, we need to use a new a new torch. Um, I think some I think Shadow Dark tries to say that you only have like like one torch takes up a whole inventory slot, which seems a bit silly. When the game is kind of veered from from what I can understand around like the five room dungeon concept, which I don't like. So there you go. Anyway, um, that's neither here nor there. So that's another torch used, do, 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 do. <clears throat> and a nineteen to go down this here corridor. Um. 
Mm -mm. So a 19 is another T junction. And then the current contents of a corridor at 13. <laughs> An obstacle. Okay, what's the obstacle? <laughs> obstacles, obstacles, there we are. 11. Trapped and locked door. Okay. Okay. Trapped and locked door. Uh, does the thief detect a trap? So. Eh, hey, yes. So we got a plus. So dexterity bonus. Plus two, so that's a 13. Um, I think that's enough. So they detect the trap. Can they disarm the trap? So there's a table in here for difficulty um, tables. Um, where was it? Difficulty to class generator. Four. Um, well, we'll just knock that up one. Um, so, OSR plus two to roll. Oh, we aren't quite OSR. So let's do 5e, so that's a 14. Is for difficulty. That's a 9 plus two, so they set off the trap. Um, well, I, probably a fumble should set off the trap. So they just don't disarm the trap. Um, so that's not disarmed, but they did detect it, so they're not going to actually. Have we got a pole? No, we don't have a pole. Mm -hmm. Drink some more of my tea. Mm -hmm. Nice cup of chamomile tea to end off the day. Um, right. Yeah, can we open the door with... Can we... Oh, but it's also locked, right? Hmm. It's also locked. We'll have to come back later to try and open this door. So let's try this north exit. So that's an eight. Mm -hmm. um, and we try to disarm the trap as well. River? Mm -hmm. um, eight. Eight is another T junction. Um. Right, let's see what's in this corridor. Five. Hallway, is that? No encounter. Okay. <laughs> Just went to three. Uh, one to three, four to five. So we're going to keep on going straight. We do like going straight in straight lines. Um, what we got? Six. Straight the chamber. Okay. Mm. 
Alright, let's check what these kind of doors are. Four. Stuck. And the other one. One. So there's nothing wrong with the other one. The other, the other one easy open. Um, now. Listen at the door. Do we hear anything? Um, do, 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 do. Where's that difficulty generator? Difficult class generator. Here we go. So thirteen. Yeah, seventeen. Nineteen. There we go. So if there's something in the room, we hear it. Mm. Chambering counter. Sixteen. Combat encounter. So we see it's 15 even. 16? Yeah, 16. Combat encounter. So we hear something in there. What is it? Let's roll a d12. <laughs> d12. Where have you gone? Where have you gone? There it is. Six. Zombies. So we hear groaning in there. Um, I reckon. What do you reckon? I reckon. 2d8s worth of zombies. Five. Six. Six zombies. So there's six zombies in this room. Why are there six zombies in here? Why are there six zombies in here? Let's, um. If they got a, we do have a prompt table. Let's see. Um, verb ninety six. Seek ten. Um, seek risk. Um, risk seeking zombies. Um, well, no, so this is something that we, so in here there is a clue um, as to how do we defeat the vampire, right? And, you know, we're taking a risk to seek out this thing. And these zombies are here to kind of like um, hide it and protect it, right? So there's a clue in this room. Clue. Um, I'm pretty sure this has a clue table in it, so let's see if we get something good out of that. But until then, let's fight these here zombies. Um, are the zombies... We're not surprised because we heard them. Are the zombie... Uh, are the zombies surprised? No. Um, so we kind of clank open the door. And we both get to act. So, it's all for an issue. Zombies go first, right? So, what have we got going on? I don't know how many zombie figures. Uh, they probably have something somewhere. Mm, but, anyway. Um, Iran is up, up, up front, along with um, uh, Luren. Um... And Karen is going to try and sneak behind them, but uh, is is in the second row, and Corberus is um, in the back, but Laren is also going to try and cast Turn Undead this round. Right? Seems sensible. But where the zombies are, I reckon they slowly. And this is quite a big room. I made this room pretty big. Um, if they get to go first, how far can a zombie move for, um, how far can a zombie move? Z for zombies, I presume they're going to be right at the end. You'd hope so. Skeletons, Smildons, Sphinxes, Stranglers, Fake Beholders, Zombie. 
<laughs> uh, oh, okay, that's different. Um, <laughs> hit points, movement, yeah. Okay. There's one slam plus two, one d6. Okay. And the charisma check is minus three. But they do all manage to get into to, to, to melee range with um, with Iran and um, Le Leren? Lemon? Lemon, it's Lemon. I remember having a laugh about it last time. So they managed to get into melee combat. Um, probably only two of them now. They're holding the door, so um, probably both go in, hold the door. <coughs> so they can probably get three on each, right? So um, first, first zombie is going to try and eat, um, could try and slam itself into into. Um, Iran. So there are three of them. So we may as well roll for all three of them at once. Um, what's Iran's armor class? Fifteen. So plus two. They all hit. Um, one d six each. Hmm. This isn't going to go very well, is it? Iran is very dead. At first impact, um, and let's see what happens to Lemon. Uh, come back here. Um, lemon's armor is ten, twelve. So one of them hits four. Um, so they're down to five hit points. Okay. Um, do we manage? To, so next round. Um, uh, Corin is going to try and stab one. Well, we'll do the magic first, actually. So Leron will try and cast. Leron fails to cast turn undead. This is not great. Um, okay. So Leron fails his round. Koren is going to try and shoot one. Zombie armor class is... Eight. So they're easy to hit. So... Um, Corin hits one. Uh, the wizard hurls his dagger at the air and doesn't hit anything. Iran is very dead. Super dead. Utterly dead. Dead in every possible way. Um, okay. So if we get initiative this time, what we're going to do is Corin's going to leap into a room, grab this clue, and we're going to run away. Right? Well, first of all, is the clue something we can grab? No. Okay. So we're not going to do that. <laughs> um, no and three. Oh, well, eight is an even number, so it doesn't matter. Um, um, okay. So initiative for the next round. Uh, joint on joint to let players go first. So, mm, I mean, it feels like we have to run away right now, um, as Iran died on the very first, the very first turn. Um, armor class numbers are just so slow at the start of this, just so low even. Um, okay, we're going to try and withdraw. Um, the three zombies on 
Lemon will, Lemon will get an attack of opportunity against them as we retreat. Oh, and they all hit him. Okay. So that's 3d6 worth of damage. That's 7 points of damage. Um, the cleric is also dead. Okay, so we're going to withdraw down this corridor at full clip. Well, are we? Do we get lost running down here? It's possible. Um, four, four, do we get lost running down here? No. Okay. <clears throat> so, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, and Coria Berius is the one with the torch. So, we're fine from that perspective, right? Um, so we're down here um, these zombies are, are, are following are the zombies following yes right so the zombies are, are, are clambering along behind us so we're going to keep on and do we have a a um <laughs> no we'll just roll for we will roll for a random encounter no there's no random encounter here um do we run in the wrong direction when we get to this interchange yes so we run down this interchange 20 what's 20 20 is a T junction. It goes like this. So we're running down here and we've made a mistake in the darkness and like the flickering light. Um, and we've run down this here corridor. Now, what's down this corridor? 11. 11 a trap we're running so we probably don't see the trap right um i reckon 16 difficulty to see the trap don't see the trap okay and i reckon the thief is in front because they've got the higher dexterity the dwarf is kind of like wobb cobbling on behind them so what trap do they run Five. Wow, a death ray. Okay, firing. There's like a a, a, a a skull head in this wall, right? And um, the faith runs straight into into it. Foot slams down on on a a tile, and. Um, Strangely, for a death ray, not much damage. Um, which is good. Uh, so, OSR, death, 1d6. Okay. Six points of damage. <laughs> and the thief has five hit points. So the thief, Corin, runs down here and just... Psh! and turns into a pile of dust um and uh <laughs> Cor Coria Boreas stops in his tracks as he is now in pitch blackness um he does have a torch on him so does he remember that he has a torch on him that's a question um no he doesn't remember immediately so he's in the darkness zombies are chasing him do the zombies still have his scent? Far six three. So they don't. They've wandered down the wrong corridor. Nine three even. So that's a uh, a low. No and they've gone somewhere else. Right. They, no and they've returned back to their original room. That's that's what's happened there. So they've given up the chase. <clears throat> 
So let's roll a d6 to see if something else is turned up. Five? No. Um, so. Whoo! Bad times for 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 Cor Boreas. Um, does he go back? I mean, after, well. Does he even know which direction he's going in? So I think he probably stumbles around for a moment, right? Uh, does he accidentally stand off his trap again, right? Because he's in the dark, he's scared, he's lost, he's stumbling about. Does he stand on the trap again? One, no, he doesn't. And it's an odd number, so... I should roll that. No, and... No, and he finds himself back out in this corridor. As he stumbles about, he turns back on his light. Right? He gets out his... He remembers he's got the, the thing in his, in his backpack. He pulls it out. He lights up. Right. Um, does he remember where he is? Probably not. Um, he's pro re he's really disorientated. So, one to two, three to four, five to six. He's gonna go. Oh, actually, well, no. Right here is a pile of dead rats, right? So I think it makes sense that he'll go. Ah, oh, right. Pile of dead rats. The wall was along that side, uh, along that side, and so he'll know where he is, right? So, with that information but no seeing the rats he's like aha I, I i i think i can make it out oh I, i'm gonna make it i'm gonna make it right and so he starts going in this direction so one two three four five six seven eight nine so he's at this door and he's like aha i remember this door it's gonna be good we're gonna be safe all right no random monster encounter so one two three four five six seven eight nine we're back here, he's kind of calm now. Doesn't need to make another check, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Does something happen? Two, no. He knows this room well, so one, he gets he gets out of the dungeon. Alive and in one piece. Uh, well <laughs> he's in one piece. Um everyone else is dead. So this has been another incredibly unsuccessful um, delve into this here dungeon. Um, but we've we've we we we're, we're kind of expanding our our view of everything. Um, unfortunately, because Corey Boris is is for is for wizard, we can kind of presume that he's the one with the um, he's the one with the the map. So you know. <coughs> he can go and recruit some new people and um, all the rest of it right um, but that's all all this lot are dead and these two so we've lost um, six characters so far to this dungeon we very nearly lost um, we very nearly lost seven um, but he made it the wizard made it which is impressive in a way um, I did think whilst he was down down here but he was done for um, but he's not he's he's made it um, so I will roll up some new characters and venture back down here again and see if we can think about a way of kind of keeping these poor sods alive right um, I've been reading more Pendragon stuff uh, yeah there are some bits and pieces that I want to record and do, so we'll see. We'll see what goes on. I don't even know if I should just upload this when I'm done or try and do a cadence. I think cadences are for losers. That's for people who take this game seriously. And they're going to be for YouTubers, not for me. No, not for me at all. And I'm just here to uh, torture poor unfortunate adventurers in dungeons that are clearly far too deadly for them. I don't really think I've kind of... I'm going to have to think about the the deadliness level of these things. And considering how bad... The fact we can only purchase leather at the start. 
um, means they're all pretty pretty um, easy to kill. Uh, I've been failing that turn on dead spell at the start of uh, the battle didn't help. But by then we'd already lost the fighter, so there's only so much help that would have done been. But hey, this is where we are. This is the uh, this is the, the 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 world in which the adventurers live or don't live more um, specifically. So um, cool. Uh, I'll wrap this up and um, probably do some something else soon. Hmm. Now that I've got the physical book, I don't need to play it anymore, right? Anyway, um, have fun. Bye-bye. Enjoy.